Hello, and welcome to Callus Prep. Today, we're going to be talking about synthesis questions. And the synthesis question will only appear with the passage pairs. So it will only appear on the social science and the natural science passage pairs. There are no humanities pairs. And the um, question will ask you either about the relationship between the two passages, or it will ask you how the author of one passage will react to one of the claims made in the second passage, or just to the whole passage itself. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this first passage pair here. And I'd like you to pause the video, take a minute to read through both of those passages, take a look at the question and see if you can answer it on your own. And then when you're ready, start the video back up and we'll talk about that question and how to approach synthesis questions in general. All right, so as I mentioned, these questions will often ask you about the relationship between the two passages. And in order to understand that, we really need to have a thorough understanding of each passage. So let's go ahead and skim through each of these passages and kind of summarize the main ideas as we go. And then when we're done, we're going to have a very good idea about how the two passages interact. So in passage one, we're being told about the black-footed ferret. And we're told that the black-footed ferret used to have a large natural range and then nearly went extinct due to habitat loss, but then later was successfully reintroduced to the wild in healthy numbers. And passage two tells us about the bison. And it tells us that the bison used to roam all over North America, and then they, and then they were hunted nearly to extinction, and then they also were later successfully reintroduced to the wild. So now that we understand each of these passages, let's try and figure out what the relationship is between them. And based on what I've already said, I think the relationship could be described as um, could be described by saying that both of these passages provide an example of a species that nearly went extinct, but then was later successfully reintroduced to the wild. And let's keep that in mind as we go through each of our answer choices here. And so A is telling us that passage two is a call for action based on the evidence offered by passage one. Now remember, each of these passages really just describes the process of the species um, going from its large range to being nearly extinct and then going to um, the point where it's later successfully reintroduced. So nowhere in either passage is there a call for action. So for that reason, I will eliminate choice A. B tells us that passage two presents a counter-argument to the main idea of passage one. Well, remember, both of these passages are really kind of discussing the same topic, and neither of them really contrasts with the other. So for that reason, I don't think it's accurate to say that either of them could provide a counter-argument to the other one. So for that reason, I will eliminate choice B as well. And choice C says that both passages illustrate an endangered species that was successfully reintroduced. And that seems like a pretty good answer choice. Remember, I said that they both provide an example of a species that nearly went extinct and then was later successfully reintroduced. So that really hits on all those main points. So I'm pretty happy with answer choice C. Of course, we're going to hang on to it and double check that D can easily be disproven before we mark the answer sheet. And D tells us that both passages demonstrate how human activities caused the extinction of endangered species. Now remember, the species discussed in each of these passages never actually went extinct, so it's not really fair to say you know, even though human activities are mentioned, it's not really fair to say that um, these species went extinct. So for that reason, D can easily be eliminated. And of course, that leaves us with C, which is the correct answer. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second passage pair here. And again, I'd like you to pause the video, read through both passages, 
and then when you're ready, start it back up and we'll talk about the question and how to approach synthesis questions in general. All right, so as I mentioned, sometimes we will be asked about one of the author's reactions to a claim made in the other passage. And so here, um, the author of passage one is H.W. Kahn. And so in order to understand what his reaction would be to the hand-washing guidelines in passage two, we should skim through passage one and kind of get an idea for what he, you know, what he feels about, how he feels about hand-washing. And so as we skim through passage one, we notice that H.W. Kahn is very interested in preventative medicine. He likes the idea of sanitation. He says that recently um, doctors have discovered the contagion and they've discovered that um, there are actually these elements that can be spread from one person to another and that's how diseases are spread. And then he also talks about how the implementation of sanitation practices, although it is in its infancy, um, it has already brought about noticeable improvements in people's health. All right, so with that in mind, um, we can skim through passage two and just see that it um, is an account of various hand washing guidelines that were published between uh, the 1980s and the 1990s. And basically these are just guidelines for hospitals that um, explain hand washing and, and the whole passage just summarizes um, the the different guidelines that were published again throughout those years. So with that in mind, um, we need to decide how H.W. Kahn is going to react to these hand washing guidelines. And so remember, he was uh, pretty enamored with the idea of preventative medicine. He liked the idea that sanitation could prevent disease. So the fact that now um, there are hand washing guidelines for hospitals, I think he would react very positively. I think he'd be pretty happy that these ideas are taking root and that hospitals are actually adopting hand washing guidelines to help prevent the spread of contagious diseases. All right, so with that in mind, let's take a look at our answer choices. And A tells us that Khan is going to react with astonishment because he thought antiseptics contributed to the spread of contagious diseases. Well, remember, we already said that Khan believed sanitation um, prevented diseases. So really, A is very easily eliminated and we're just gonna move right on to B, which says that Khan is going to react with apprehension because he doubted the practicality of sanitation practices. Well, that's really the same thing as A, remember? Khan already said that um, even though sanitation is kind of in its infancy, he's already seen noticeable improvements and that um, the rate of, um, or the mortality rate has actually decreased. So for that reason, B is also a very bad choice and we can easily eliminate that. C tells us that Khan will react with indifference because he believed most diseases could only be treated with expensive medications. Well, remember, Kahn um, is very interested in preventative medicine. He um, really liked the idea of sanitation, and he even said that sanitation could help prevent the spread of disease. So I think that's also not a good choice. So we will eliminate C as well, which leaves us with D, and that says Kahn will react with esteem because he advocated the use of preventative practices that impeded the spread of disease. And remember, we said that he would react positively and that he liked the idea that sanitation could um, prevent the spread of disease. So again, this is hitting on all those main points. And so for that reason, I'm really happy with choice D. And since we have eliminated the remaining choices, I'm very confident in marking that as the correct answer. And when you approach synthesis questions on the SAT, 
I want you to keep in mind that they do require a thorough understanding of both passages. So when you come across a synthesis question, make sure you have a summary of each passage, and that way you'll have an idea about how the two passages interact. So then when they ask the question, you can of course answer it in your own words, and then assess each of the answer choices based on the uh, relationship that you've already noticed on your own. And of course that always makes it a little bit easier to eliminate wrong answer choices and to find that right answer choice, especially when there are um, tricky choices that look correct but have some sort of flaw with them. So do keep that in mind when you approach these synthesis questions. And that about does it for today's lecture. And we'll see you next time.